I've been producing dance music professionally for 12 years now, and I've been fortunate enough to be able to tour the world, get over 100 million streams on Spotify, and now I'm gonna make a Tech House song and walk you through the whole process step-by-step step in Ableton. That way you'll be able to follow along and make your own song too. And whether you're a complete beginner or you've been at this for a while, I promise that there's something in this video for you. So let me just quickly show you the ingredients of a Tech House song so we can go into this whole thing with the right framework. Because if we get the foundation right, it's gonna make everything else so much easier. So stick with me and I'll do my best to make it worth your while. I'm breaking out the iPad to explain some things visually. So tech house music and pretty much every other genre can be broken down into five elements. And those are gonna be drums, bass, mids, vocals, and effects. Examples for drums are things like kicks, claps, and hi-hats. For bass, we'll probably use a pluck bass and a sub bass to fill out that low end. For mids, we'll probably just use a synth, but you can also use like piano or guitar. For vocals, we'll try to keep them simple and catchy, and then we'll definitely process them and adjust the formant, and that's gonna give them that special kind of dance music sound. Stick around, you'll see what I'm talking about. And for effects, I put sweeps, impacts, crashes, and reverses. Basically just the ear candy kind of stuff that helps smooth out transitions and adds a lot of dynamics and makes builds and drops feel way more epic. So follow along with me, let's go ahead and open up Ableton and we're gonna start with the drums. Welcome to Ableton. This is where we're gonna make the magic happen and we are gonna start with drums. So open a brand new project up, press command S and I would recommend saving your project into a folder that's dedicated for sessions. And if you wanna take it a step further, have that folder inside of your Dropbox folder so everything you save gets uploaded to Dropbox and you don't have to worry about losing any projects. And we'll just call it Tech House 101 and we'll save. So a good Tech House BPM is around 125. So let's go to the BPM up here to the left in Ableton and just use our arrow keys on the keyboard and move that up to 125. Great, so for drums, first things first, we need a good kick. I'm gonna use splice and I'm just gonna type in kick and I'm gonna sort through a bunch of kicks until I find one that I vibe with. All right, I kind of like the sound of this kick. I will say it might be a little bit aggressive for Tech House because you usually want something short, kind of punchy, but not too overstated. So let's just drag this in and see what it sounds like. I'm gonna hover over this gray area till I get the magnifying glass and click and drag down to zoom in. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just highlight a section and press Command D to duplicate it. All right, so this kick is a little bit too long in my opinion, so I'm just gonna shorten it like this. In Ableton, if you hover the mouse over the edges of a clip like this, you'll see these tiny little squares and you can click them and drag them. And that's a great way to fade stuff in and out. All right, I think that's a bit better. I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate this out. Once again, that's just Command D for the shortcut. And next up, we need a clap. Kick, clap, and hi-hat is basically the formula for almost all house music drums. Oh, that's nice. If it looks like I'm going fast, I'm just doing what I was doing before and just highlighting and pressing Command D to duplicate. The goal here is to make a nice little drum loop. That way we can add stuff to it and take stuff away, create dynamics, and then build out some song structure and really get things going. I'm gonna go ahead and press Command T and make a new track. And let's look for some hi-hats. All right, this one's nice, but it's actually in a loop form and it's at 124 and our track is at 125. So I can either double click on the clip, just on this colored bar right here, and click warp down here to the left and change the BPM of the sample down here where it says BPM. And this just tells Ableton what BPM the sample is. So since the sample's at 124, we can just move this down one using the arrow keys to 124 and then it will line it up. Now, sometimes there can be a little problem with warping because the more you stretch stuff out and move it around, the more it degrades the quality. So what I'm gonna do for this hi-hat is since it's basically the same sound looping over and over, I'm just gonna turn warp off. I'm gonna zoom in once again, just by clicking this gray area up top and dragging down. And then I'm gonna click where I wanna slice this clip, press Command E to slice it, delete the excess, use those fades like I said earlier, just to shorten this a little bit. And then I can just press Command D and duplicate this hi-hat out. And it's pretty loud in the mix. So I'm gonna go over here to the right, click on a fader and just press the down arrow to turn it down. I'm just explaining all this stuff the first time I do it so you can follow along every step of the way. All right, Command D, duplicate these hats. All right, we're off to a great start with drums. Let's add in a little bit of percussion. I'm just gonna look for a snare that I can use. Let me just drag this in, turn it down a little bit because it's just a little background percussion element. And I wanna have it come in right here so it sounds like this. However, I want it to do a little swing. So in order to put a little swing on it, I'm gonna press Command 3, and that's gonna change the grid from standard to triplets. I'm also gonna press Command 2, which makes the grid wider. Command 2 makes it wider, and Command 1 makes it thinner, so you can get really, really detailed and precise. So now I can move this over to the right a little bit, and it puts a little swing on it. This is what it would sound like before the swing. And this is what it would sound like after the swing. 
So it just kind of adds a little feel, which can really go a long way, especially for house music. All right, so I want that to come in there. On the second time, we can have it come in right here. All right, so that's just a little snare for some flavor. Let's add just a little more percussion to spice things up. I'm gonna use big white beats and go into the perk samples. And I love this sample right here. I want it to go deck 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 probably at the end of this, almost as like a little fill. So I think if we do this pattern, it should work. And then I want there to be sort of a big clap impact right here at the end. So let's look up impact in splice and we'll use this one. That's a nice one. We're still on our triplet grid here. So to go back, we can just press command three again. That goes back and forth between triplet and regular. All right, we'll turn that down a bit. And then another thing we can do is add some sort of sub drop, some sort of sub impact here. Yeah, something just like that. And we'll press command to eat a slice and just press delete to get rid of that. And then we will use the fades to make this a bit shorter. So I know I dipped a little bit into effects, but during this process, just build out a good drum loop using a kick, a clap, and a hi-hat, and then try spicing it up with a little percussion. So we've got our drums pretty much taken care of for now. And next we're gonna find bass. Bass is one of the most foundational and important elements of Tech House, and it pretty much drives the whole song. Does Tech House mean techno house? I've actually never thought about that. What is Tech House? Tech House is a subgenre of house music that combines stylistic features of techno with house. Like I listen to Tech House sometimes and I kind of know what it sounds like, I think, but it's cool to know that it's defined as like techno and house combined. All right, so we're gonna make a bass in Serum. However, if you don't have Serum, don't worry. You can go into Instruments, Instrument Rack, Bass, and just go through and just find a bass in here that you wanna use. Actually, you know what? We can just try that, why not? All right, we're gonna try this basic sub sign and let's actually keep the claps going. So, so far we have this like little intro thing with the drums. And you know, normally that'd probably go on twice as long, but for the sake of the tutorial, we're just gonna have the bass come in right here. And this is like kind of a dropout section. So we have like our intro, and then we have this kind of breakdown section where the dynamics dip low, people can take a breather on the dance floor, and you start to build the momentum. And then we'll have this go into a drop, which is obviously the most satisfying part of any dance music song. So let's come up with a little bass line. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this sub impact off for now, just to work out a bass line. And now all I'm doing is just trying different notes out and building something in the G minor scale. And just real quick, in case you missed it, to make a new MIDI track, you just press Command Shift T. And then to make a MIDI clip on that track, you highlight how long you want the clip to be and you press Command Shift M and that makes a new MIDI clip. Now if the piano roll isn't up down here and your screen just looks like this, you can just double click on the top bar of the MIDI clip right here and it should open up the piano roll down here and you can just click and drag so you can see more of the piano roll. And then make sure this little headphone icon here is enabled. That way when you click these notes, you'll be able to hear what you're playing. And then if you wanna zoom out on the piano roll, just hover the mouse just to the left of the keys and click and drag left and right and you can make the piano really big or really small. Okay, back to our bass line. Now, if you're listening on a phone right now, or maybe some laptop speakers, you probably can't hear these notes. Let me just press Command A to select all of them, and I'll hold Shift and press the up arrow. That'll move everything up an octave and you can hear the notes that I'm playing. I'm gonna go ahead and lower these an octave. This is where the kick's gonna come in. So I'm just gonna highlight my kicks. I'm gonna paste them right here. And so far, this is like our intro section right here. This is gonna be basically our build. And then this is where the drop is gonna start. But right now, if we play this kick and the bass together, they're gonna be playing at the same time. And especially with sub frequencies, that's just not gonna work because they're gonna clash. They're gonna create distortion, dissonance, and it's just not gonna sound professional. So what we need to do is make the bass duck whenever the kick plays. There's two different methods we can use to do this. Both of them are gonna involve us bringing up the bass track. So just double click on the bass right here. First thing we can do is go into audio effects, go into dynamics and drag a compressor onto our bass track and then click this little arrow here and click side chain below. And then where it says audio from, we wanna select our kick that we're gonna click on EQ here to turn it off. Turn our ratio all the way up, bring our attack all the way down. Make sure that RMS is selected instead of peak. And then we can click on this little bent line icon here and play with our threshold for how much we want the side chain effect to take place. 
So just to demonstrate what the side chain is doing, I'm gonna put it on a piano right here and solo the piano. So we can hear that every time this kick is playing, it's causing this piano to duck down in volume for a second. If we go really extreme and bring the threshold down a lot, this is what it sounds like. But we want to find somewhere in the middle usually. Now what I like to do specifically for house and tech house, anything four on the floor, I like to use a plugin called LFO tool. This basically simulates what side chaining is doing, but there's no compression involved and you can get really, really particular with how much of that sound you want to be cut out. So I'm just going to delete this compressor and then I'm going to adjust LFO tool a bit and just make room for that kick. And if you get a little click sound in an LFO tool, just go to the dot in the upper right corner, click on it and just drag it to the left just a little bit. That's my favorite way to side chain for four on the floor stuff. All right, so I'm gonna copy LFO tool. I'm gonna go to our base. Once again, if you don't have LFO tool, you can just use a compressor like this to side chain just as easily, but I love LFO tool. So here's what we got for the drop so far. Just duplicating the clap over and the hi-hats. Now we're getting a bit of distortion. That just means everything's too loud. So there's an easy way that we can fix that. We could just go all the way up to the top track, which is this kick here. Just click on it and then scroll all the way down to the last track. Hold shift and click on the last track. That's going to select all the tracks of the song. And then click on any of the faders here to the right. I'll just click on this last one here and use the arrow keys to just turn everything down. So if you select all the tracks and turn one of them down, it'll turn all of them down. Real quick, if you're enjoying this or learning anything at all, I would love for you to consider subscribing and giving me the chance to teach you how to make the best music that you're capable of. Okay, back to the song. Let's duplicate some of this percussion over a little bit. All right, I think I'm gonna actually leave this piano in because I kind of like the way it sounds, but I wanna take out all of the really low frequencies so it doesn't clash with that sub bass that we already have. So you can use an EQ in Ableton. I prefer using Pro Q3 because it's just incredible. And I'm just gonna scoop out everything below around 100 Hertz. All right, that's good enough for now for drums and bass. Next up, we need some mid-range elements. I'm gonna go ahead and use Serum for this. Most basic synthesizers will work for this, but I'm just gonna look through some presets and look for something maybe kind of brassy or some kind of cool lead that I can use. That's kind of cool. Let's just detune it. Wow, I've got to pee so bad, I'm gonna go pee. I'll be right back. Oh, let's try some patterns here. And let's go ahead and turn this sound way down. And I'm just experimenting, I'm trying it an octave higher. Actually sounds kind of sick. Oh, also, I have this audio effects rack down here in Utilities, audio effects rack, called Make It Big, and it does just that. I'm gonna put LFO tool after these effects. Sick, that's sounding dope. I'm loving that. I'm gonna go ahead and EQ it, just to get rid of any unnecessary low frequencies. All right, it's actually starting to kind of sound like something. I'm gonna to try to add one more little sound here, just some sort of tonal thing that we can keep going consistently through the song. That's kind of sick. And then let's filter this by just scooping out the lows and some of the highs. Sick. I'm gonna press Command J. Command J is just to consolidate something. So let's say that we had a MIDI clip here, a MIDI clip there and there. We could highlight them all, and press Command J and make them all into one. But I just want this first little part here. Go ahead and make this intro twice as long. So an easy way to do that is just to highlight the intro that we have so far, press Command C to copy, and then click right here where I want the intro to keep going. And I can hit edit and go down here to paste time. And that will paste in the intro and move the whole track after that over. Super convenient. All right, so just doing a little basic structuring stuff here. <laughs> you know, actually, I think the drop goes kind of hard without this extra sound in here, without this sound. It's kind of sick with just this basic sign. <laughs> I 
kind of love that. Let's try copying the make it big processing chain, putting it on this sound. Yeah. Uh, that goes so hard, actually. I'm gonna automate this amount to go down about halfway. And to do that, I can just click on this little line icon right here up to the right. And that'll open up automation view. And then I can highlight this section, hold shift and drag this whole line up. And if you look down in OTT, it's adjusting the amount when I do that. In Ableton, it's so easy to automate stuff. You gotta make sure that you're in automation view, which I just showed you how to do by clicking that little line to the upper right right here. And then you click on what you want to automate, like the amount of OTT down here, and it'll bring up a line on your track, and you can click and adjust the line however you want. And you can highlight a section and hold shift and move the whole thing up and down. So I just want to move this whole section of the drop here so that OTT is on 100%, and it comes in nice and strong. All right, so now that we've played with some fun mid-range elements, it's time to make some epic vocals. I'm gonna press Command T and create a new track, and we're gonna think of some really dope vocals. <laughs> I'm just gonna kinda come up with some sort of gibberish thing and just free associate and see what happens. I'm feeling like you gotta wake up or go to sleep. You gotta wake up or go to sleep. Open your eyes to notice me. Wait, uh, does that even make any sense at all? <laughs> I, okay, that is pretty silly. If I hear something better, I'll definitely re-record it. But let's start by processing these vocals. I have a chain that I'm gonna use because it's epic. I have one that I used on my song Nicotine for John Belia, which is like my EDM side project. It's got a lot of processing on it, a lot of which is probably unnecessary. Basically, it's just EQ and compression over and over. Wake up, wake up, open your eyes and wake up. You're more than alive, wake up. <laughs> it's so stupid, but it might actually work. I actually think I want to use this plugin by Antares. I think it's Mutator. Let's see. Open your mind, wake up. Ooh, that sounds kind of creepy. Open, open your mind, wake up. Open your mind, wake up. <laughs> so much. That's actually kind of hot. Oh my gosh. All right, all right, all right. Now we just need to put some effects on the vocals. I'm just going to send it to ascend with some reverb, which right under the fader here, there's these two boxes. And these guys are just sending this vocal signal all the way down here to where it says reverb. If we solo the vocal, we can hear it. There's so much inside. Wake up. We can click this reverb here to see it and maybe adjust the decay time if we want to. And then adjust how much reverb we want by turning this send up and down. There's so much inside. Wake up. And then the second one here goes to this delay down here. So we can add some cool delay as well. There's so much inside. Wake up. Open your mind. Wake up. There's so much inside. Wake up. All right, those are some cool effects. Wake up. Open your mind. Wake up. There's so much inside. Wake up. Okay, so now we have some drums, bass, mids, vocals, and now we need some effects. Now, since this section here is kind of a build, I'm gonna go ahead and press Command T to make a new track. I'm gonna go over here and turn off automation view by clicking on that line again. And I'm gonna go to splice and just look for a good sweep that we can use. Cashmere's got some incredible sweeps and just incredible samples in general. I'm gonna turn this down a little bit by adjusting the fader to the right. Open your mind, wake up. There's so much inside, wake up. And then we'll have this stop right here. And we'll have everything else kind of cut off there as well, just to create a little section of silence right before the drop. So much inside, wake up. Another thing we can do to kind of make the drop have a little bit more rhythm, is just throw in another hi-hat. I'm gonna go into my sample pack here and go to hi-hats and just drag this in. Just try to add a little rhythm to it. Yeah. And this hi-hat is obviously really piercing and kind of taking over the mix. So one thing I'm gonna do is put LFO tool on it, and then we're also gonna filter it a bit, maybe with just some basic EQ. Another thing we can do is highlight all of these hi-hats and just pitch them down a little bit by using the transpose function in Ableton, which is just right down here to the left. I'm just kind of adjusting them, giving them a little more feel. All right, that's a cool little hi-hat loop now. At this point, I'm just gonna listen through a bunch of times and try to clean things up, as well as create more dynamics. Cause dance music is really all about dynamics. You gotta be able to control and manipulate the flow and the feeling of energy. Cause that's how you take people on a journey. That's how you move them emotionally. And that's one of the trademarks of electronic dance music in general. And especially something like Tech House is all about the feel, the dynamics of things. I'm gonna throw in some sort of snare roll here to make the build build a little more. Wake up. There's so much inside, wake up. 
All right, another thing we can do to adjust the dynamics of this is actually go to our master channel, which is down here at the bottom, and we can automate it to turn down on some of these lower sections like this breakdown right here, so that when this drop comes in, it bumps the whole thing up a dB or two and just makes the drop sound massive. If that sounds confusing, don't worry, I'll explain. So go to audio effects here, make sure that your master track is selected here and drag utility onto your master. I just have a limiter on my master, by the way, on the practically clipping preset. And these are my settings, you can copy them if you want. But the point is you have this utility before the limiter and you want to automate the gain to go down a dB or even 1.5. I'm going to turn automation view on really quick by clicking that line. And we just want to have utility turned on in this breakdown section right here. So I'm going to turn it off, highlight this section, hold shift, move that line up. So now we have our intro. How much inside, wake up. And now during this breakdown section, the whole song is 1.5 dB quieter. So then when this drop comes in here, the drop seems even louder and hits a lot harder. And this is a trick that I actually learned from Rusko like way back in the day. Rusko is like a legendary dubstep guy and a lot of other big producers do this. And it's just a trick to make the drop feel bigger. There's so much inside, wake up. Now I'm just going to spend a few minutes listening through, tinkering around, maybe trying out some new elements, and then I'll show you what I got. We'll listen to the whole thing. All right. All right, so in total, I've spent an hour and 24 minutes on this, from a blank Ableton project to what I have now. And that's not including the time that I stopped for the gardeners and I had to pee. So in that last little stretch, all I was doing is just kind of polishing things up a bit, throwing some EQ in where I felt like it was necessary. I added this brass element to spice things up, kind of like what Fisher does. I just threw OTT on to make it sound huge. I'm using East West. And if you want to get the same sound, this is the exact preset that I used, but you can find tons of brass samples and splice. And that's a journey you can take on your own if you need to. So now I'm just going to organize each of the elements into drums, bass, mids, vocals, and effects. And then we'll listen to the finished product. All right, now we have everything organized. We have our drums. We have our bass. We have our mids. We have our vocals. Wake up. Open your mind. Wake up. And we have our effects. And now I can play the finished product, which is just an intro, a breakdown, build, and a drop. Super basic song structure. And if you wanted to make a full track out of this, you could just copy and paste and switch some elements and stuff up on the second drop. So here's what I got. Open your mind. There's so much inside, wake up, open your mind, wake up, there's so much inside, break down, open your mind, the dynamics are nice and low and then they're building, there's so much inside, wake up, open your mind, wake up, there's so much inside, wake up. All right, now let's say I had another hour and 24 minutes to work on this. I think I could turn it into a pretty solid tech house track. And you could easily play this out as is live, see how it goes over, adjust accordingly, that kind of stuff. But the whole point of this was to show you the five element formula and just how simple building a tech house song is when you think about it in terms of drums, bass, mids, vocals, and effects. So if you don't have a project open already, I encourage you to go for it. Drag some samples in and start putting something together because it's probably a lot easier than you think. Hopefully this video demonstrated that and you have a lot of creative potential in you, but nothing's gonna happen unless you take action. For those of you who wanna take things further, I have a paid program to take people from beginner all the way to advanced and professional, whether you're a producer, a songwriter, or you wanna be an artist. I'll put part of the course in the description for free. You could check it out, see if it's something that you're into. Hopefully this gives you the right mental framework in order to build your own songs and empower you as a producer. Remember more than anything to stop making excuses and start making music. Cheers.